Okay, good folks, welcome back. So while we're here with the Frenner, I might take a quick look at the computer system on the Frenner. So if we spin this around, let's see. Here we have our computer. It's pretty simple and easy to operate. Okay, so it's got various bits of information on it. So up here on this first one, that tells us which chart we're going to be operating on. So at the moment we're on number one, which is your uh, main hook block. Now, if we press F6, okay, we can see uh, various duty cycles. So we can go down to the Rhino hook, which with the manual extended, the Rhino hook, fly jib. So all you would do is press F7 or F6 to scroll up and down to whichever one you want to go to. And because we're going to be operating on the winch, we'll F10. Okay, now if you have changed your duty, what you will notice is your parts of line may have changed. So we've got to be aware, if we're going to be operating the 20 ton Frenner, it's got 4.2 ton line pull, and we've got four parts of line in it. So what we need to do is change this one. So in order to change your parts of line, if you press F1, so two parts, three parts, four parts, and F10 for enter. Okay, that way that matches up with what we've got on the hook lock. As we come down, we can see at the moment our front axle has 9.2 ton. Now as we pick up a heavier load, that's going to get heavier obviously. If we press F8 here, that will bring up our load charts that we're currently on and you can scroll up and down your load charts as you need to. Okay, so you can go across, you can go up and down, but, or F10 when you want to exit. But realistically, if we look down by the side here, we're going to have a hard copy of our load charts, which you'll find is going to be a lot easier to use than the ones on the computer. Okay, F9 is to silence it, so if you're driving in four-wheel drive, it has a constant buzzer going, so if you'd like to silence that, you can press F9, F10 is your enter button. Okay, over this side, as we said, F4 is your parts of line, you've got your rear axle weights there. That's our turbo timer, so when we turn it off, our turbo timer is set for two minutes. Okay. Now, if we come down here to F5, all right, if we press F5, that's going to give us a whole heap of information on our drives and all the warning lights, etc. Now, if we have a code that comes up, okay, if we press engine, all right, we've got all, got all our details for the engine here. If we have a code, we can press F5 here, where it's got SPI, FMI. Press that, and it'll run down through. You can look up to see what the actual code that is showing. You can run down there to find that. Okay. Then we go back to F10 and exit. Exit again, and we come back to our working screen. Okay. Now, the details down the side here. Okay, so, at the top here, if we had the fly jib on, that's where we put in the offset for the fly jib. That's the length of the fly jib that we've got on. 600 kilos at the moment that we've got on the hook, so that's including your hook blocks, etc. We are currently good for nine and a half ton where we're sit, sat. Okay. The boom tip height is 2.7 meters, not to be confused with the boom length, which is 5.8 meters. Our current working radius, so the distance from our hook block to our front axles is 3.7 meters, and the boom angle is 3.3 degrees. Okay, so that's just a quick rundown on the computer for the Frenner. Now, if you take it out of crane mode, you'll come up with the driving Let's flip that over. All right, and here we have our driving screen. So when you're on the road, this is the screen you're normally going to see. When you put it into crane mode, it should flip over to that screen. 
and then once it's in that screen you can start operating. Now before you drive one of these on the road it's going to be a real good idea to make sure that you do check your emergency steering as well. So the, the problem with the front is if the motor cuts out you've got because it articulates to steer the crane you're going to lose all of your steering ability. So it does have an electric backup but you should be checking that every morning before you do take one of these out on the road. Okay, so how do we check that? What we'll do, we'll turn the crane off. Okay, so to check the steering, we'll just turn the ignition on once. Okay, I'm gonna let go of the part brake to allow me to turn. And with the ignition on, the electric override should turn. Okay, so that alarm is just warning you that the parking brake is on. Okay, so we can still turn the crane with the electric override as well. So if you're going to be driving these on the road, it is going to be a bloody good idea to make sure that's working correctly as well. Okay, let's put that handbrake on just to shut that back up. Okay, so thanks for your time and thanks for listening. If there's anything else you want to know, don't forget to drop us a line and don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, thank you.